gathered on the Cusick stand side. T uh, Free Street, the chance of the first goal, falling to Joe Regan. Joe Regan across the face of the goal. The right full forward, Declan Sullivan, tried to put it into, keep it in play, but the ball going wide. Well, tremendous support. And there's the Crease 3 Cork followers watching at home here on television this afternoon. And remember, history being made today. The first uh, college's final ever televised live. Well, I have bad news for Cork in that uh, Kevin Kiley, their midfielder, is not playing. Is that bad against all Murphy, the very tall midfielder. You'll be seeing plenty of him as the hour progresses. Uh, a six-footer, Jim Murphy. Apparently was given absolutely no chance to rescore playing in this game because he had a, a, a serious back complaint. He plays. Cormac McNally breaking the ball down. Chance at the first score for 3 3 and picked up very smartly indeed there by Declan Sullivan, the man who tried to keep the ball in play to get a score a moment ago. Well, he's got that point. So the first score of the game for 3 3 and their supporters naturally in jubilant mood. So then the uh, midfield situation for Crease 3 is that uh, Brendan Searles, the captain, who formerly played at centre half-back, is, is at midfield. He's partnered by Jim Murphy. Kevin Kiley doesn't play. Well, enough of that. On with the players. Pat Corcoran sets up an attack for Alan Rowe. John Fallon, the captain for Tune. <laughs> Jerome O'Mahony, 16-year-old in goal for Cork, but coming to uh, Jerry Burke for St. Charles. Jerry Burke finding Kevin Larkin in support. The chance of the equaliser perhaps for Kevin Larkin as he gets it across the face of the goal, but he was under a lot of pressure and that ball went wide. Kevin Larkin had a chance, but he was under a lot of pressure. The marking was very tight, and as you might expect in the college's final, there will be very little slack or loose play this afternoon. Well, Jarlis may have the advantage of the win, but it's uh, Chris 3 who lead by a point to no score. This kick out to be taken by the youngster, uh, Jerome O'Mahony. Uh, not even 16, in fact, I believe, and he's a member of the junior team that are in the Munster final for the Fruin Cup. This competition today for a very famous cup, the Hogan Cup. Corrick Brogan, his first touch of the ball. The St. Gerard star, his first shot of the match, but that too has gone wide. And the St. Gerard attackers uh, will find it... Uh, won't find it easy, I'm sure, to judge that win because uh, so often the case when you're playing with the wind, it takes a while to settle down, to find uh, the right angles and get in your shots with accuracy. O'Mahony for Crease 3, a big boy. The kick out breaking to uh, David Creighton. David Creighton down the field towards John Murphy, but he was stopped by Pat Corcoran. Jim Murphy and he gets it to Brendan Searles, the captain. Cormac McNally, the Gerrard's fullback is out, but John McGrath comes across to it. He's lost to the authority to Declan Sullivan. Raymond Brennan is there for St. Gerrard's too. Uh, he fouls uh, Declan Sullivan. The three in will be to three, three, and the full forward will come out to take it. He'll be Michael O'Donovan. Well, an extraordinary achievement for uh, Cree 3, really, to uh, win two All-Irelands in such a short space of time because uh, this school was founded only in the 50s. There was a, a very large national school in the uh, Turner's Cross area of Cork, where this school is based, but in that sprawling, blossoming uh, part of the city, it was felt that there was a need for a secondary school. Well, now there's only over 700 pupils in that school, but it is a day school, and that's the extraordinary thing about it. Michael O'Donovan, then, with the free for Cree 3. Sweeps it in, beautifully taken over the bar, another point for 3 3. And as I was saying, uh, it's not easy for a, a school, a, a day school, having to defend on a student from a close in area around the school to make a team. It's not easy for that kind of college to make an All Ireland final. So 3 3 have obviously settled the better, they lead by two points to no score. But Traditionally, St. Charlotte's in the past have uh, been slow to get into a game, but when they find their rhythm, they're always uh, a, a very major force, and certainly uh, they are the dominant school in this competition since it was started in 1946. Well, St. Patrick's of Armagh won that one. A fellow called Iggy Jones, who went on to become a great footballer, scored three goals and four points as St. Charles were beaten. St. Charles won the All-Ireland over the following year, and they've won nine titles. They're seeking their tenth today. David Kennedy for Cree 3. David Creedon in support. Nice support play there by Creedon. And John Murphy had picked up a lovely position, and that's a great ball through to Declan O'Sullivan. He tries to jink his way through. He still has a chance, and he's put it in the net. It's a goal for Cree 3. Oh, that was a very good goal. It started 
It was started by David Creedon making a support. A lovely ball came through for John Murphy. The ball uh, fell kindly a second time for Declan O'Sullivan and he side-footed into the net as the St. Gerald's defender Raymond Brennan lost his footing on the greasy surface. Corrick Brogan for St. Gerald's and a dreadful start for St. Gerald's. The three three can hardly believe their luck, I'm sure, that they're leading by a goal and two points after only six minutes of play. Free kick will be taken to Corey Krogan, but what a, an incredible start to this game. A goal and two points for the outsiders, and let me stress this, uh, stress that because St. Gerrard's are very strong favourites. But Corey Krogan will settle them, and that's much better now for Jones. That was a very good kick from quite a distance, but Krogan found the range, he was accurate, and he landed the point. Gerrard, he gets it down towards Alan Rowe. The first touch for the man who scored vital goals in the championship run up to this time. Breaking towards Leslie McGettigan in front of the goal. He'll try for a point with his left foot here. Breaks it to Porrick Brogan. Oh, it's come off the crossbar. A great effort by Porrick Brogan. The, the goalkeeper for Cork, Jerome O'Mahon, he didn't know much about that one. But the ball is out over the sideline. They're playing on, but I think I thought it was out over the sideline. However, Leslie McGettigan for St. Gerrard's. In towards Jerry Burke, the uh, cornerback for Cork came very strongly for that one. It breaks to Michael Martin, the chance of the point for Martin, Michael Martin, but the young lad from Dunmore McHale shot that one wide. Well, that was a great effort by St. Charles because when Leslie McGettigan uh, broke the ball down, it fell to Porrick Brogan, and Brogan's uh, instincts, always so sharp, when he tried the right thing, it smashed back off the crossbar. A let-off for Cork. Well, a man to watch out for this afternoon is the St. Charles midfielder, Porrick Brogan, uh, rated by many as the best, possibly the uh, best quality footballer in the game. He's six foot four, he's a magnificent fielder and runner of the ball, and he tries a shot here, and he's put it right across the face of the goal. And another letter for Cork as Porrick Brogan comes through. And you can see there from that picture the magnificent stride of Brogan. He's six foot four, he's a young lad from Mayo, he's only 17 years of age, and what a future lies ahead of him. And already people are thinking of a future Brian Mullins, a future Jack O'Shea. Well won there by Finney Walsh for Priest 3, the left halfback. Brendan Searles, the captain. A good attacking type of player, Searles, towards uh, John Murphy. And John Murphy, the Priest 3 cornerback, when well, he picked that one off the ground. But uh, I was about to say that this fellow is uh, causing a lot of problems with the positions he's taken up. Because twice he has taken Pat Cork and the, the Gerald centre halfback out of the centre halfback posi position. And the uh, Cork and nice to play a pivotal type of game. But Murphy is causing him problems by bringing him right and left. Eddie Collins with the kick for St. Gerrard's. Brogan uh, not quite catching that one cleanly. It comes to Martin. He's got Alan Rowe inside him if he can find him. It breaks to Mark Butler. Mark Butler, a great shot and a wonderful save by the goalkeeper. I think it's gone over the bar. I think Mark Butler's uh, shot is a point. It is a point, actually. Mark Butler, the full forward. Uh, from Kilmaine and County Mayo took a great shot, a tremendous dive by Mahoney. Well, it's a point, but how well the goalkeeper did. But all credit too to Mark Butler. As that ball came in, Jared is looking for the goals. Perhaps they'd be better off shooting for points, but in any event, it was a good effort, and they got the point. So Jarrett's have settled, just a goal between them now, and uh, with the way the scores come thick and fast in college's football, a goal, not a, not a, a fantastic lead. A great catch by Brogan in the middle of the field. He's got Mark Butler. There could be something on here. That's another great save. Jerry Burke is in there for Charles. It's gone wide. Well, already you sense that Brogan is going to do things for Jarrett. It's a magnificent catch, a great punt in. Mark Butler was in position. He might have tried to catch that one. Perhaps he was unsure uh, of whether or not he was inside the small square. He tried to flick it. Uh, it was a clever little effort, but uh, the goalkeeper again did well. 
Well, if Crease 3 are to win this All-Ireland final, I think they have a hero in the making in this goalkeeper, O'Mahony, who has performed magnificently in the ten and a half minutes of play that we've had. Alan Rowe for St. Charles. Leslie McGettigan. Chance of a point. A goal by Leslie McGettigan. Sixteen and a half years of age from Letter Kenny, a brother of Paul McGettigan who won an All-Ireland Colleges medal about ten years ago or so with Gormanston. Leslie McGettigan got a great goal against Mells in last year's semi-final and he's got a great goal today. Well, Jarrett's are looking for the goals. Uh, I said a moment ago that they might be wiser to take the points. Well, I would still feel perhaps that they'd be wise to take points, but there was nothing wrong with that effort by Leslie McGettigan. He's a very good forward and he'll pose problems for Cork. Brogan goes high again. Three to Priest three. The sides are level then after almost 12 minutes of play and uh, a very lively and exciting and indeed a very entertaining college's final here. And this level of football, of course, always provides great excitement. They say in football that there's hardly a better uh, level of football. And there's uh, Paul, McGett uh, Paul McGettigan's brother, Leslie McGettigan, sticking that one into the net. And what a smashing goal that was. Michael Martin for uh, St. Charles got Pat Corcoran in support. A nice run by Anthony O'Connor Davin for Chuma, very strong lad, playing at right half-back. Anthony O'Connor Davin in towards Mark Butler, the goalkeeper has that one well covered, and the cornerback John Quinlan is there to support them. Across his own goal, that might have been dangerous, but it can still come for Frank Quigley. set up the kind of attacks that yield them good scores in the early part of the match and John Murphy has taken up a good position but look at the determination there John McGrath the uh, young fullback from Kilmaine and Mayo who plays with St. Charles quite a number of Mayo lads here I think possibly something like seven Mayo lads on the St. Charles team there's another of them Pat Corker breaks to Eddie, C Eddie Collins the Roscommon lad from near St. Castlery plays with the St. Crowans club uh, he was fouled in possession there good refereeing by Jim McCurry because uh, as Eddie Collins held on to that ball, you might just have felt that he was holding on to it too long and that there might have been a free in, but the referee knew that the tackling was hard, that he was under a lot of pressure and uh, gave him a free out. Well, there's a fine strapping young fellow who plays at fullback for St. Charles, Cormac McNally. He played a cornerback in the team that won the All-Ireland last year. He had a very good second half against Maharan, the semi-final, and he's at fullback today. O'Connor Davin's shot for Tumas block. Martin, Martin, John Fallon has made a run to his right. Porrick Rogan has run with him. And here's Porrick Rogan, who will go for the... He, well, uh, I'm not quite sure what he was going for. He pulled that one wide, but uh, what a good run that was by Brogan again. And interestingly, Brogan and his partner, John Fallon, both ran in support of the man there. And uh, at this level of football, where speed and fitness so important, support played just as important. Kenny Walsh. His effort blocked by Leslie McGettigan. Leslie McGettigan shooting for the point. A wonderful shot by Leslie McGettigan. Oh, that's great shooting by the young Johnny Golad who's got, who got the goal earlier on and now he's got a point. That was a very good effort by McGettigan. Well, the goalkeeper there, Jerome O'Mahony, is waiting for a substitution to be made. And uh, sadly for Crease 3, Jim uh, Murphy, the six-footer at midfield, obviously his injury has not stood up to the test. Uh, it was a great boost for Cork, and uh, Jim Murphy was able to play. But now he's been replaced by Stephen Ryan, a lad who has experience and has played for this team. But uh, Crease 3 are now playing without their two first-choice midfielders. Here's one of St. Charlotte's first-choice midfielders, Porrick Rogan. He was looking for McGettigan again. I think you'll see that... Uh, St. Charles working that move, the midfielders finding Leslie McGettigan in the right corner, but uh, Crease 3 were able for it that time. So after 15 minutes of play, it's uh, 6 points to St. Charles, 5 to uh, Crease 3, 1-3 one, three to 1-2. One, Porek Brogan wins it again for St. Charles, what a match he's having. Mark Butler made the run for Jarrett, so too did Jerry Burke. The ball played out the field, and Priest 3 can keep this one in play. Frank Quigley, finding the substitute, Stephen Ryan. 
Stephen Ryan looking for the full forward Donovan but Cormac McNally breaks it down and he's got a man in uh, support but it uh, falls for three three the foul was on the number 15 Paul Cleary and the number 14 on the right of your picture there Michael O'Donovan will take this one so the chance of a an equaliser here for Michael O'Donovan, the Crease 3 full forward. Well, this uh, school, Crease 3, has been a magnificent nursery for court football, and uh, of the present team, uh, very good players like Jimmy Kerrigan, Dave Barry, Timmy Dalton, uh, Efi Fitzgerald, that good under-21 player last year. Well, they are all products of this uh, nursery close to Crease 3. Compared to the young school, as I was saying earlier on, but already they've made a magnificent mark. O'Donovan's kick, not a good one, and he sent that one wide. Well, as I was telling you earlier, they won the 1968 uh, final. They're trying for their third today, Crease 3. They went on there. Uh, interestingly enough, there seemed to be some confusion in the minds of the officials, but it's St. Jarrett attacking, and Jerry Burke with this one. For uh, Jarrett, in for Darren Rowe. The ball just did not fall kindly for him. It fell kindly again for Jerry Burke. Uh, I think he was trying for the point there. Calls to Kevin Larkin. Uh, a lad who also had back trouble and uh, had to come off injured in the semi-final against Mahara, but he's fit to play today, a free to St. Charles and Alan Rowe. Well, after about 15 minutes of the uh, second half of the All-Ireland semi-final against uh, uh, Mahara, Jarrett's were in a lot of trouble, but uh, this fellow Alan Rowe got a great goal. And now he's got a very good point from that play. Jarrett's interestingly have a range of free takers because Brogan can point them from long distance, Rowe can point them from that far side with his right foot, and Leslie McGettigan can point them and take them from the right with his left foot. So uh, tremendous options open to the Jarrett sideline when decisions have to be made as to who take free. I was going to say about uh, Crease 3, they beat Belcamp for the 68 final, the team uh, that featured uh, some very good footballers in the Cogan brothers, and one of them, Derek, captained that team. Seamus Looney also played on that team. They won the hurling in Munster that year as well. That was a tremendous double. St. Gerald's attacking again. Jerry Burke read that one well and let his man uh, contest the ball. Jerry Burke will try for the shot here. Aimed, aimed it for Kevin Arkin, but it came to Leslie McGettigan. A very good block down by the right half back. Uh, Frank Quigley, and Frank Quigley runs in support again. Oh, that's good work by Quigley, the lad from the St. Finbar's club, but it's gone out over the uh, sideline. That line ball will be to... Well, I think the referee thought at first it was to uh, Crease 3, and he was making in, his way in, but now uh, he takes the word of the linesman, and this ball... Yes, it's a, it's a Crease 3 ball, all right. He, the referee, I beg your pardon, thought first it may have been a Jarlis ball, he was making his way in towards the canal end, but then, as I say, took the word of the linesman, it's a Crease 3 ball, all right. Michael Martin to run to that one. Won by Finney Walsh for Crease 3. In towards Michael O'Donovan, but he has to come very deep for these uh, type of passes. Oh, a great ball by Donovan. He spotted his man very well. That was a tremendous ball towards Jer Regan. Jer Regan, a dangerous looking man. Ray Brennan is in there to get it out, but so too is the Crease 3 forward. And he's in there too, too far. He's in no man's land, and there it's a free out. A moment of anxiety then for the St. Charles defence, and that really was a wonderful pass because Jerry Regan there, number 10, a school sprint champion, had taken up a nice position as the ball fell to him, but he just could not elude the St. Charles markers. Jim Tracy's kick out. Jerry Regan winning that one again. De Declan Sullivan there in support. Declan Sullivan. John Fallon there to help for St. Charles. Ray Brennan tried the block down. And that one, has, has it gone wide? No, they've kept it in play. Oh, a dangerous moment in there. Eddie Collins is covering the left half back in and his own goal, covering, and John Fallon is also covering, and the free will be uh, where the ball landed for a late foul there on Eddie Collins, the Jarlis wing back. So there's referee Jim McCurry. He also had charge of the semi-final between Jarlis and Mahara. He certainly knows the Jarlis style. But in college's football, you hardly ever uh, have bad-tempered uh, matches. You hardly ever have dirty play. They're always played out in the most sporting uh, of styles, and that certainly adds to the appeal, this unique appeal of college's football. Alan Rowe goes high, but it's be he's beaten to it by David Creed. Anthony O'Connor Davin. Percy Jarrett tussling on the ground there. The referee perhaps may throw the ball in. Or will he rule that O'Connor Davin had it in his hands first? But again, I think that's a good piece of refereeing because the uh, Chum lad was in possession and therefore uh, 
in the uh, subsequent tussle and tangle for the ball, he was the one who had to get the free. Porrick Brogan to take it. Well blocked there by Brendan Searles. The court captain, and court come away with it again. Dexon Sullivan. Got Michael Donovan, the full forward in support. Donovan has to come out very, very far for the ball. He's beaten to it by Ray Brennan, but he's fouled, says the referee. And a free in to Priestry. Well, Priestry won their second All-Ireland in 1970, and two men that had played in 68, Martin O'Doherty and Brian Murphy, played again in 70. Brian Murphy captained the team. I need hardly tell you that both of those players went on to win All-Ireland football and hurling medals for Cork, men who have given tremendous service down through the years, great players in their own right. That year they beat St. Malachy's at Belfast thanks to a late goal by a lad called Noel Miller. And uh, Crease 3 won two important matches this year, the Munster final and the All-Ireland semi-final with late goals. They have a habit of that. Will they need to do that today or can they do it today? Well, only time will tell. And up goes Porrick Brogan in the square. Magnificent fielding again by the Tume lad back there in support. And certainly the dominant figure in this game so far is Porrick Brogan. Dexon Sullivan, uh, a young lad from the Nemo Rangers club is injured there and perhaps uh, he'll uh, get attention or will the referee uh, insist that the play go on Jim Tracy from Ballantyne and just inside the Mayo border plays with the Davis club and John Fallon the tune captain to set up an attack Alan Rowe and David Creedon two very strong boys and a hard tackle there on Alan Rowe by uh, the right half back Frank Quigley the foul on the tune lad and the free will be to tune and Porrick Brogan has gone over to take that one. Well, we saw Brogan set up some very dangerous attacks. We saw him kick a point from a free, but just a couple of moments ago, we saw him back there, right in there in his own square, to take the ball out of the clouds and clear his line. Alan Rowe loses that one to David Creed. Pat Corcoran standing under it, studies ground, picked up a nice position and got that one away. Porrick Brogan called for the cast. Kevin Larkin makes a run to his left. But Brogan looking for Mark Butler, the target man at full, at full forward. The ball breaking through there. Across the face of the goal. Oh, that's dangerous. Michael Martin, can he keep it in play? No, it's gone wide. And there was indecision there. As that ball came in uh, from Brogan, he tried the long ball in because uh, Jarrett's got a goal from that kind of uh, effort a few moments ago. There was indecision there as that ball broke. Uh, was it the back's ball or was it the goalkeeper's ball? Well, between them, they might have messed it up. It might have been dangerous, but it slid wide. Michael Martin for St. Jarrett, breaking away from him. Coming to Anthony O'Connor Davin. Mark Butler to try and keep it in play for Tume. He just can't. It's taken away by the wind there, and it's swung away wide. Well, to continue the theme of Priest 3 past in this All-Ireland Championship, uh, as I said, they beat St. Malachy's Belfast by a point. And an interesting uh, aspect of that game was that Saint in the St. Malachy's team that day was Martin O'Neill, the present Northern Ireland soccer captain. And Martin O'Neill once went on record as saying that in all his sporting career, and uh, he has, of course, won many honours, uh, particularly in soccer, in all his sporting career, the greatest disappointment he ever suffered in his life was losing that All-Ireland College's final. Well, I thought I would tell you that to give you an idea of just how serious it's taken by the boys who play in this competition. Brendan Searles for Crease 3, regarded as their best player, a Cork County minor. Under pressure there, and he was very closely marked, but it breaks for uh, the left fullback, John Quinlan. Stephen Ryan. Regan again had picked up a nice position. John Murphy, John Murphy tries a shot, it's gone in. Oh, it's, uh, that was a tricky one for the St. Charles goalkeeper. Jer Regan did the damage initially. Jerry Regan had picked up a very nice position there and he broke the ball very cleverly with his left arm to John Murphy. Now John Murphy tried one, Jim Tracy thought he was going for the point, he saw it just a little bit late and there was absolutely nothing he could do to keep it in play. And what a smart goal that was and there's John Murphy the score. Well, 3-3 may be missing their midfielders but they're putting up a tremendous fight. For a program for Jarvis. Won by the fullback Paul Harrington. Leslie McGettigan wins it back for St. Charles. This can break for Alan Rowe. Alan Rowe, chased by David Creedon. Alan Rowe will try to work his way back to the right for, for a point. A good drive by Alan Rowe, but he's pulled it wide. So 2-2, two -two, that's eight points for Cork, 1-4 for Toon. A point between them, and Cork uh, in a very handy position. Got two uh, smartly taken goals.
and they lead by a point with uh, four and a half minutes to go to half time. Jerome O'Mahony's kick out. Unable to keep it in play there, David Kennedy. And this line ball will be to St. Charles and Porrick Brogan. Well, Leslie McGettigan thought about taking it, but he's decided to leave it to Porrick Brogan, who has such a tremendous drive of a, from long range. Brogan's shot there. John Fallon to keep it in play. Just can't. The wind has pulled it away again, and it's just gone wide. So anxious moments for Chum, who played good football uh, once they scored the goal, but uh, Cork came back and... Certainly Cork have taken their chance as well. On limited opportunities, they've got 2-2 and they lead. Four minutes to half time. Finney Walsh to set Cork attacking again. Cork are playing with great confidence and great spirit. Stephen Ryan, the substitute. Pat Corcoran winning it for St. Charles and then losing it for a moment. It might still come for the Corkman. Gerrard's under pressure. John Fallon back there. Chipped it up nicely. Oh, that was good play by the June captain. But uh, it's won back by David Kennedy and Corcoran wins him illegally, so says the referee. It's a free to Cork. <laughs> Brendan Searles, the Cork captain. Turned aside for a moment there to listen to an instruction from the far side of the field. Stephen Ryan had made a run for a short pass. Brogan saw him out of shot there. Brendan, er Brendan Searles, the captain. A very good footballer. That's a tremendous kick of the ball. And it drops over the bar. Oh, that was a wonderful uh, shot by Brendan Earls. Well, it was on his uh, wrong foot, so to speak, really, because he had to kick come around the corner, around the house, and kick that one with his left. And he judged it to a nicety, and that was a very good point. And I think this is a fellow who's going to provide a lot of inspiration to Cork today. 2-3 to 1-4, Cork in command, three minutes to half-time. Brogan wins it for St. Charles to try to set up another attack. Down to Butler, Butler lets that run, run through, and Michael Martin with the chance. Will he draw on it or will he try and pick? He'll try and pick. He cuts his way in, a chance of a goal, and he's put it wide, and he really should have done better. Well, Jarrett's are missing a lot of chances. They're missing chances of points particularly, but as that ball came in, uh, it all fell kindly in the end for Michael Martin. Brogan did the, the damage. Leslie McGettigan made a run that was deceptive, uh, but he couldn't get the ball. But as Michael Martin went to pick that one up, he got it all right. He turned inside his man, and suddenly he found himself in a lovely position. Well, with the left foot, he might have curled it in. It was quite a good effort, but it went the wrong side of the post. The sideline ball will be to St. Charles. The trail uh, coming up to half. St. Charles were very strong favourites, not just on tradition or anything like that, but on the form that they showed in the semi-final against Mahara. They were very strong favourites to win this final, but they trailed coming up to half-time. Alan Rose kick. Mark Butler going up. It breaks to Michael Martin. He surely should, can go for a point here, and uh, he's missed that one again. Jerry Burke for St. Charles is fouled. He's tripped by his man there. This free will be to St. Charles, and Alan Rowe probably will take this one from the right, and certainly he can get a point back here. But uh, really, you wonder all through this first half why St. Charles are not uh, snapping up their points, because they're playing with the wind. Uh, Leslie McGettigan did get a goal, but all their other attempts to sneak one in have come to uh, north, and Alan Rowe has put that one wide, and certainly things not going well for St. Charles, with 40 seconds to go to the half-time whistle. Three to one four. That's, uh, nine points to seven. Two points between the sides. Colors decrease three in command. Not a good kick out this time either, and St. Jarrett can keep it in play. Anthony O'Connor Davin. That support there from McGettigan. O'Connor Davin in towards Butler. Butler will try and flick it, but Paul Harrington won that one, and he won himself a free because Butler was too far in there. And so a free to uh, Colors decrease three. We didn't really have many stoppages. We had. Uh, a substitution all right for Cork, and I don't imagine that the referee, Mr. McCorry, will add on too much time here. <laughs> Mahoney's kick out. 
than he uh, was. The left half uh, back for Crease 3 has had a very good first half. One of the best players, I think, on the Crease 3 side in this first half. Mark Butler wins that one. Inspect that's the start. He's got Martin to his right. Now, he just cannot uh, regain his feet to find him. But Michael Martin of St. Charles was in a, very, in a free position for the ball there. And if Butler could have worked his way out, well, the, the fact that he didn't is a tribute to the tight marking of Harrington, the strong uh, and sturdy fullback for Crease 3. But Corey Froger to put the deficit to a point, perhaps, with this effort. Uh, it's in front of the goal, he's got the win, but it's quite a distance. It's about 40 metres out, Rogan swings it in, and it's won in there by Mark Butler. Is he in the square? The ball played out eventually. Uh, Oscar Dam, but he gets it away for Crease 3, and Crease 3 were a little lucky then. Alan Rowe to John Fallon, it's half-time. Well, Crease 3 played against the wind in the first half, but they lead at half-time. By two points, nine points to seven, two, three, two, one, four, three, three lead. After a half time that was, uh, after a first half that was exciting at times, uh, always interesting, uh, good football. Uh, I think uh, you have seen uh, colleges football as it can be played. The players are very, very fast, they're very, very fit, they're giving it everything. It's played in uh, a very sporty manner and it's all very enjoyable. But more enjoyable, I would feel, for uh, our viewers watching in the southern part of the country today because Cork lead at half time even though they've played against the wind and uh, certainly snapping up their chance as well. And that uh, well-taken goal by John Murphy, perhaps the uh, crucial goal there. Resume getting in, had got a nice one for St. Charles, but Murphy's goal rocked Charles back on their heels at a time when they were doing well. And so at half time, uh, Cork lead then, Colossi Priest three, two goals and three points. St. Charles two, one goal and four. But that's it for the first half. We'll be back uh, for the second half uh, in, of this final. And uh, with the rain cleared away now and uh, with the... Uh, quite pleasant conditions here at Coke Park and with the marvellous college's atmosphere we're all looking forward very very much indeed to that second half. Right I think you've pretty well said it all Jim thank you very much Jim Carney there doing the commentary for us and of course as he just touched on at the end uh, a match like that schools match college's match has that special vibrant atmosphere and excitement all its own which makes a final so exciting. We're delighted indeed to be able to bring you for the first time live the college's football final and we look forward to a good second half two-point lead at the moment for Colossus to CS3 in Cork. Let me just tell you by the way uh, what's happening on our program today as you know we had to leave the first frame of the final the 35 frame final and indeed there'll be plenty of time to see all of that uh, some other time during the uh, during the transmissions between today and tomorrow when they play to a finish in order to we left it in order to get to the start of the college's football final and we're going to show you now uh, the fast the last few minutes of that frame at the point it was 63 to 20 to Davis and he's at the table so now Steve Davis 47 points ahead and of course that means that Cliff wants snooker told you when we were going to it that it was 63-20. In fact, Thorburn um, committed a foul, gave four away, and that's where Davis took it up at 67. So, first frame of 35 to Steve Davis, and uh, they play eight in this afternoon's session. They play nine in the session which begins at 
and uh, that's what they must do. So that's open-ended in, in a funny sort of way, 9 and 8, 17. And then tomorrow they play to a finish. They've got eight frames at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then, if they need it, the final 10 frames at 7.15 start tomorrow evening. And we're going to follow that, of course, through, as we promised you when we started on Friday. The interesting thing, of course, is that there's 10 years the difference between these two fellows, Steve Davis and Cliff Thorburn. And they're playing for the difference of £15,000 because the winner takes... Have a look at that fluke in the very last frame of his match against Tony Knowles last night. straight across what? he settles himself down very well in the middle of his 147 break he also stopped for a moment where and uh, Eddie Charlton in the quarterfinal and he beat Dennis Taylor, 13-11, in the second round. We're going back in just a few moments see the second half of the college's cup final, the uh, football final between Kalorstik Tree three and St. Charlotte's in Chuam. And then we're coming back here and at around about a quarter to four or so, when the final is over, we'll be going to Hickstead for the Kerry Gold Championship and Brian McSharry will be there taking us through. And we have good news and I might as well give it to you now. In an earlier competition today, the Kerry Gold B competition, uh, Brian McSherry was on a little while ago to tell us that Paul Darrow won it, riding PJ Carroll. David Bowen for England was second, and Captain Jerry Mullins on Kill Anna was third. And that is the second Irish win of the Hickstead tournament so far. Paul Darra won, Jerry Mullins three, and we wonder what they're going to do when they come to the real one, the Kerry Gold Championship, later this afternoon. After the show jumping is over, we pause for a while to let Anish Agzarish bring us up to date with matters Irish. And uh, after we're all a little bit refreshed with that, we come back at 5.15 for more snooker. And uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But now they're nearly ready to go at Croke Park, I believe. And I think we can go back there straight away. It's good to hear the weather's improved because it really was a miserable day for football earlier on. Let's see just what the state of play is as we have a little resume now of the first half. And I look forward to the second with Jim Carney. G. Avarish agus Paul Charash ka Pawkit Croke. Kalashta Kree 3 Croke ka Ga Kool agus Tri Koolini. Kalashta Iraha Nierfa o Tuam Kool agus Kera Koolini. Well, uh, this game started off in very dramatic fashion. The second half will start off in a few minutes, but before it does, we'll have time to look back at how Crease 3 got a tremendous boost early on. They got a very, very early goal. It shot them into a lead of a goal and two points. David Kennedy for Crease 3. David Creedon in support. Nice support play there by Creighton. And John Murphy had picked up a lovely position, and that's a great ball through to Declan O'Sullivan. He tries to jink his way through. He still has a chance, and he's put it in the net. It's a goal for Spreeze 3. Oh, that was a very good goal. It started. Yes, that goal was very smartly taken, and then John Murphy, the centre half forward, uh, came back and got another goal. Well, St. Jarrah scored, uh, Leslie McGettigan got one for them. A well taken goal it was, and that certainly uh, put St. Jarrah in a strong position. <laughs> Leslie McGettigan. Chance of a point, a goal by Leslie! Sixteen and a half years of age from Letter Kenny, a brother of Paul McGettigan who won an All-Ireland Colleges medal. Well, we won't have time to uh, show you the uh, third goal. That goal was scored by John Murphy, I'm afraid. The, uh, 
But uh, all Cork uh, supporters, I'm sure, will, will remember with great satisfaction how John Murphy took that one in the top right-hand corner of the net. We're all set to start this. Second half, and away we go then. Corey Brogan for St. Jarrett. Jarrett, I feel, will play in a more determined mood in this second half. Pat Corcoran to run in support. Towards Mark Butler, the full forward. Mark Butler in towards uh, John Fallon. John Fallon then is brought to the ground. Two points St. Jarrett's trail, and certainly if uh, Leslie McGettigan can kick with his usual accuracy, that deficit will be reduced to a point. Kicks it well and he's landed the point and that's much more like it from Chum. And uh, Chum supporters obviously will be hoping here that their side play a far more direct game here and that when it comes into the forwards that they'll try at least to shoot points because uh, they did get one past that uh, young man Jerome O'Mahony but uh, apart from that O'Mahony was equal on several occasions when Jarlis rather, rather hopefully tried for goals. John Fallon to set one up here for, for St. Charles. Through towards Mark Butler. Michael Martin has made a run. Mark Butler across the face of the goal and he's put it wide. And uh, Mark Butler had a man inside him there. And as he kicked Mark Butler there, he just seemed a little casual. And certainly Charles not seeming to put the strength into their drives today. Perhaps they're trying to measure them to judge the wind. But uh, at this stage of the game, they should know the kind of weight you must put on a ball if you want to land a point. Well, a change from the glory days of the dubs of the 70s. Uh, just one solitary figure there huddled in the rain with the umbrella on Hill 16 today. But hundreds of cheering supporters of both sides are away over in the Cusick stands. Michael Martin for St. Jarrett's. Through to uh, John Fallon. John Fallon trying to lead his side by example. To Leslie McGettigan. He's got Brogan in support. Still Leslie McGettigan. Not a good ball. David Kennedy for uh, Cree 3. A very fast pair, but uh, too fast, and indeed the ball was too fast there because it ran out of play. Well, St. Charles, as I was telling you earlier, have won the Hogan Cup on nine occasions. They won it first of all in 1947, thanks to a tremendous uh, single individual performance, six points scored by Sean Purcell, who later emerged as one of, if uh, not as many people feel, one of the greatest uh, Gaelic footballers that ever came out of the West, and indeed many people feel one of possibly the greatest footballer to ever grace Coke Park. The man who inspired Gold, Galway to win an All-Ireland title in 1956. Well, he had won a Hogan Cup medal. And indeed, people who followed uh, the career of Sean Purcell often said that his greatest ever performance was in that 1947 final. Well, that uh, was St. Gerard's first victory. They won again in 1958. They won in the 60s, the 70s, and in the 80s. So they've won an All-Ireland in every decade. But what they dearly like, most of all, I'd say, is to win two in a row, won back-to-back -back by winning here today. A good block down there by Leslie McGettigan. But uh, he fouled the ball as he got it. He doesn't like that decision, Leslie McGettigan. And you have to have some sympathy for him because he worked very hard to win that ball. But uh, he just couldn't come away with it. Well, if Sean Purcell set up a success in 1947 for St. Charles, they went on then to win another one in 1958. And in 1960, they won a team with players. Uh, they won a final. Uh, their team had players like Ender Collar and Seamus Layden, men who went on to inspire Galway to win three in a row in the 60s. Pat Donnan played in that team too, so also did the late uh, Mayo footballer John Morley. John Fallon, the Jarrah's captain, comes to it and wins it a second time. But Finney Walsh, a great player on the uh, 3 3 side, he had a wonderful first half. McNally and Donovan. McNally uh, taps it back towards himself and. Uh, comes out to clear it again, it breaks to Searles, the captain. He'll try for the point, Brendan Searles, did he curl it enough? Yes, he did, it came in. Brendan Searles kicked a wonderful point from a free with his left foot in the first half, and now he's kicked a great point from play. But they actually are the St. Charlotte supporters, they're not cheering that point or anything like it. They're, they're calling on their team to rouse themselves to greater effort and get up the field and get scores. If Charlotte's win today, they will have won two All-Irelands in a row, but uh, it won't be the first time that they'll have done that because um, 
1960 and 61, they put two back to back. And interestingly, in 1961, uh, one of the players on that team was Father Oliver, was Oliver Hughes. Now Father Oliver Hughes, the teacher of the college and trainer of this present side. But there in the um, tracksuit is Michael Carey, the, uh, the Cree Street trainer, the man on the left there, who has worked so hard to get this team into the final. Michael Carey himself played county minor football for Cork. He won a medal in that side that beat a good Mayo team in 1974. But now all his thoughts and attention firmly fixed on uh, winning this All-Ireland final for Cree Street. Corey Grogan for St. Gerrard's uh, wins it at the second attempt. John Quinlan uh, got that one out for Priest 3 and then it broke down to John Murphy. John Murphy looking for the point. Another dangerous looking one, but that one has gone wide. John Murphy just not finding the accuracy there that he showed in the first half when he scored that goal. Well, after 61, St. Gerard's went on and won two more titles in 64 and 66. Uh, they had some very good players in the 66 team in particular, and they had some wonderful tussles with St. Mel's. Incidentally, in the early part of, in the, in the early part of that decade, uh, Mel's had won all Ireland themselves, and they had tremendous rivalry with Jarrett. And indeed, one of the stars on the Mel's team uh, in that uh, period of time was the present director general of the GEA, Liam Mulvihill. Well, Liam Mulvihill, I do know, has very uh, fond and happy memories of colleges football. It was a period of it was life that he enjoyed very much. He's now turned to uh, the more serious and that administrative side of the game. Not that playing the game is not a serious business. It's deadly serious uh, today for these players. And here's Eddie Collins for Jarrett. Brogan, a great catch. And she tried to set up an attack. Martin had called for a pass. Jarrett are running everywhere. Uh, not a good delivery, however, from Brogan. And uh, Finney Walsh once again, and certainly the best back uh, on the Crease 3 team. He's had a really good match, has Finbar Walsh, from the uh, Nemo Rangers club. But it's breaking to Alan Rowe for St. Gerrard's. Not a good ball by Alan Rowe, however, and Stephen Ryan, the substitute, took it out for Crease 3. Pat Corcoran for St. Gerrard's has got O'Connor Davin to his right. Gives it to McGettigan. McGettigan has come out the field to try and set up scoring chances. One man who could point the way, literally, for St. Gerrard's. Under a lot of pressure, Leslie McGettigan, he's unable to play the ball under that pressure, but he held on to it too long, and this time the referee gives uh, a free out to 3-3. Three, three. Well, 3-3 three, three went in at half-time, leading by two points. They're still leading by two points. Eddie Collins for St. Gerrard. Chipped it up nicely. Eddie Collins transferring it to John Fallon. John Fallon towards Leslie McGettigan, who is now playing uh, right half-forward. Towards Porrick Brogan, a great run by Brogan, and those ground devouring strides of Brogan. Perhaps he'll try and go all the way here. Alan Rowe in front of the goal. Can he get room to take a shot? A swinging shot by Brogan. Well, who else could score that goal but Porrick Brogan? St. Charles are back in the lead. They lead by a point. Well, Brogan started it. St. Charles are delighted. Here's the start. It came in from uh, Porrick Brogan to Alan Rowe. They set up a goal, the two of them, against Mahara. And here they try to set up another one. Alan Rowe found his way block. He picked it sideways. It fell on the ground. Now look at the, the concentration there of Brogan. He stuck out the left uh, leg. It was a great effort by Porrick Brogan, and in it went. Well, back live at the other end of the field, uh, Jim Tracy, the St. Gerald's goalkeeper, uh, under a bit of pressure, had to work hard. He's a good goalkeeper, this fellow, and he did well there, and uh, he got himself a free, and he'll take it himself. to keep them in that contention. In fact, it brings them back to level pegging on the score. 2-5 each now. That ball coming in there from the left wing. Uh, an excellent score for Queen's 3, two, making it 2-5 to 2-5. And what a match we have in prospect now, because Brogan's goal came after eight minutes of play. It brought St. Charles back. A two-point deficit was turned into a point lead, but now they're level again. So these sides giving it everything in this exciting second half. Brogan goes high again for St. Charles. Another magnificent piece of fielding, and he's fouled. Well, strangely today, the St. Charles captain, John Fallon, the man who played so magnificently well all through last year's championship, uh, has not been a dominant force, but uh, that's not surprising, really, because uh, this lad uh, injured his ribs and uh, played against Manila with packed ribs. There's an interesting uh, story behind that injury. I'll tell you about it in a moment. But Eddie Collins to uh, take this one for St. Charles. 
Stephen Ryan, the substitute, coming away with it for uh, PC. David Kennedy, he's very speedy, this fellow. He's got a lot of pace. He'll try here to put Chris 3 into the lead, and that's a wonderful point by David Kennedy. Well, this is a very good footballer. He scored a, a crucial goal against uh, Mullingar in the semi final, and now he's got a vital point 2 6 to Chris 3, 2 5 to St. Charles. Well, it's interesting uh, from a St. Giles' point of view that uh, Fallon and Brogan, the midfield partnership, uh, played against each other. Uh, Brogan playing for Mayo Miners and Fallon playing for Galway Miners uh, in a game recently. And uh, in a tussle for the ball, uh, Brogan it was, who uh, crashed into John Fallon and injured him. So if John Fallon received an injury from his midfield partner, well, certainly it is uh, curbing his power uh, greatly in these past couple of matches that Jarrett's have played. But here's Jerry Regan. He was a school sprint champion at one stage for Cork, but he's just ran out of puff at the end of that run. But it can still come for the... Um Three lads, and in fact, they've won a nine ball because John McGrath couldn't keep that one in play for St. Jarrett's. Three, uh, three, three, lead by a point. Can't quite see who's kicking that one. It may be uh, David Kennedy. In fact, it is. Trying to keep it in play. Michael O'Donovan, the full forward. From a very uh, acute angle. And it's gone wide. 11 minutes of play gone. A point between them. 3-3 lead and 3-3. Uh, the line, the tag of underdog. With a tremendously gutsy performance today. The Jarrett supporters trying to rouse their side once again. Both teams have tremendous support here today. Brogan goes high again. Wins it at the second attempt. And what a great match Corey Brogan has had. Towards Alan Rowe, the strong man in the Jarrett's attack. Alan Rowe marked very tightly today. And uh, has lost that one. David Creedon did very well for 3 3 there as he got it in towards Cyrus, the captain. And now Jerry Regan has made a run. A very good run. Jerry Regan can surely take the point from there. Will he try and go all the way? Perhaps uh, it'll be a free out. Yes, it will. He ran too far with it there. And really, that was very... Uh, well, perhaps I, I shouldn't be critical, really, because it's inexperience and uh, immaturity. But he's only young, this lad. He's not even 16 years of age. And I dare to criticise the lad for running too far with it at that age, because uh, these young fellows still only learning about the game at this level. But uh, he might well have gone for the point all the same, you'd have to say. Serdles and Ryan. Ryan the substitute winning it for St. Jarrett. Fallon tried to block down. Corcoran uh, for St. Jarrett. And McGrath to come out with it. McGrath should uh, try a first-time delivery. Gives it to John Fallon. John Fallon. Blocked out. It can still come for St. Jarrett. McGettigan. McGettigan who has worked so hard in this game. Still a point between the sides, still 3-3 lead by a point, 12 to 11, 13 minutes of play gone. McGettigan towards Butler, the full forward, knocked out of his hands. Butler not having uh, as much return from the chances offered to him as uh, St. Jarrett might expect, perhaps. But uh, Paul Harrington, the uh, Cork fullback, has played very soundly indeed. McGettigan again. Butler and Harrington. Butler rises high to it. Comes to Butler and again it's knocked out of his hand. And this fellow finding it very, very difficult to retain possession. Pat Corcoran there. But a hard swing there by O'Regan. Hard but fair. And it breaks for 3 3. And away they come again. John Murphy. A great block down there by uh, Kevin Larkin for St. Charles. Stephen Ryan for 3 3. Has got uh, the left full back Quinn and this young lad from Valley Fahan who has played very well for 3 3. Joe Regan. Towards Donovan and McNally. It's a Jarrett. Donovan, the cock lad, keeps it in play. It does well, and eventually it's gone out over the end line. Uh, St. Jarrett are hoping for a kick out, but it's a 45 metre kick. So Brendan Searles, the Cork captain, happy, uh, no doubt, that his side are leading by a point, playing with the wind in the second half to kick this one. Strongly Phil fellow he is. Indeed, the physique of these lads on both sides is very, very impressive, and certainly if they continue and maintain their interest in football, we'll see some very good footballers here in the future. O'Connor Davin to keep it in for St. Jarrett, but it's just dropped over the line, and Searles will take this 45 big kick again from almost uh, the same position. He may leave it, uh, actually, We'll see in a moment. He 
does leave it uh, to uh, Ryan, the substitute, I think. So it's 3-3, continually attacking. Searles had made a run. Ryan's kick. Donovan is waiting for the break. Kennedy was there too, and out comes McNally for St. Charles. But uh, the ball is breaking down to uh, Ryan, the substitute. John Fallon to try a block down again. There's a crease being ran under that. I think it's uh, Donovan, uh, Murphy, the centre half forward. Murphy, uh, the shot is blocked, and that ball has gone wide. So, uh, relief for St. Charles, but certainly the Jarvis backs are under a lot of pressure in this second half. And uh, St. Charles would. Uh, be well advised at this stage to try and improve their play on the far side of the field because certainly uh, John Quinlan and Finbar Walsh when they attack down that far side and Ryan the substitute doing a lot of damage but here's Brogan for St. Jarrett's trying to get it towards John Fallon but, uh, but having to play with the left the boy Brogan hardly ever uses his right and having to play with the ref he had to turn back and come around and thus he made uh, life hard for himself there and the ball went out over the side but Brogan the man to keep Jarrett in it and here's John Fallon the captain Looking for a man in support. He finds one now in Leslie McGettigan. Leslie McGettigan under a lot of pressure. Perhaps he'll get a free. He will. Still a point between the sides, and uh, they're very, very evenly balanced at this at this stage. But Parik Brogan, uh, even though playing into the wind, well, he really uh, hits a terrific pump on a dead ball, and he may even be hoping to send this one all the way. Boric Brogan then. Martin to keep it in play for St. Gerard's. It's knocked out of his hand and it's gone wide. Almost 17 and a half minutes of play gone. Crease three leading. The Cork supporters singing in the rain. Well, St. Jarrett's have won the All-Ireland in every decade because uh, after the 60s, they won an All-Ireland, two All-Irelands in the 70s, 74 and 78. Two teams captained by Mayo County players, Henry Gavin and Jimmy Lyons. And, uh, of course, St. Jarrett's won last year. Can they do it again this year? They're under a lot of pressure to retain that Hogan Cup. Priest 3 playing with tremendous fire. David Kennedy, one of their better players, the left half forward. If Priest 3 were to score another point here, it would put Jarrett's under a lot of pressure, you'd have to say. It might fall a second time for Declan Sullivan. Declan Sullivan, left-footed, but it's just gone wide. And uh, in the heavy conditions, it's not easy for, those, for these lads to score. You'd see them really at their flying best on a drier sod. But uh, yet, we are seeing some tremendous football in this All-Ireland Colleges final. Porrick Brogan, another tremendous catch. He's giving a marvellous exhibition of high fielding here today. Down towards Michael Martin. It might come for John Fallon. It, uh, Michael Martin actually holds on to it himself. Down towards Mark Butler, but he's beaten away for him. And Mark Butler, has, I think, has come out to the 40 in a swap with Alan Rowe. In fact, Mark Butler may even go to midfield uh, and swap with John Fallon. We'll follow that in a moment. But here's Brendan Searles, the court captain. Brendan Searles trying for the point himself. An important one, and it's just gone in, and it's just gone wide. And as Ray Brennan went for that one, he hesitated just a moment. And uh, Sullivan, the corner forward, saw his chance. Now watch as it comes in here. It's a difficult one for Brennan, the jealous cornerback. Sullivan put him under pressure, leaped on his back and punched it just wide at the post. But in any event, you'd have to say that Tracy perhaps had it covered. Tracy again for St. Charles. Tripped in the goal in there as uh, Sullivan went in. And uh, St. Charles might have benefited uh, if the referee had let play on, go on there, because they must stop now, and Crees uh, 3 will have a chance to regroup their forces. There's another substitute coming in for Crees uh, 3. The lad going off, I think, is the number 15, Paul Cleary, another of the nine Nemo lads on this team. And the number 19, uh, the substitute that has come in, is Eugene McCarthy, according to our programme. So Jim Tracy with the kick out then, a point between the sides, nine minutes to go. Brogan goes up again for St. Charles, but he's beaten this time. Tracy under it for uh, St. Charles. He's got uh, a couple of men to give it to. One of them is Raymond Brennan. And not a good ball from Raymond Brennan, and it's gone uh, out over the sideline. And uh, he might have been better then to face Eddie Collins in front of him. But here's Joe Regan. 
Eddie Collins, in fact, had let his man go. Uh, he was concentrating on Regan, and uh, another man had gone loose. As that ball is, uh, swings in and swings wide. Well, if St. Charles missed chances by kicking a lot of wides in the first half, these three are missing great chances now of stretching that lead. But 2-6 to 2-5. Please three the leader, Jim Tracy to kick out for St. Charles. Brogan goes high again for St. Charles. Corrick Brogan to try and set up an attack, but the Jarrah's attack is not playing with great cohesion today. Jerry Regan had called for that pass. Three three always seem to be able to find their men, and that's the problem with St. Charles. Michael O'Donovan out first. Breaking to the substitute, McCarthy across the face of the goal, but McGrath, the Jarrah's the Jar right fullback, the young lad from Kilmain, did very well. And, uh, Averted danger there, but it may be only temporarily because this is a 45 meter kick to uh, Crease 3 and Stephen Ryan, the substitute, will take it again. Uh, will Brendan Searles take it? No, he leaves it to uh, Stephen Ryan. The Crease 3 supporters in great voice. And how well they might, because we now have only uh, nine minutes to go in this game. Stephen Ryan, oh, a great kick. Jim Tracy to try and keep it in play. It will surely be a free out. There are three men in. The play answers the referee. Down towards Larkin and Brogan. Larkin to win this one for St. Gerald's. To get it up the field towards McGettigan, but that's not a good ball. It's going to run away from McGettigan and Quinlan. Quinlan to try and keep it in play. It's a Gerald's ball. Well, Jarrett's badly need a score, and they're looking to Brogan to get it. And Brogan feels that one. But it's kicked away from him. And when you're in the lead, you play with a certain spirit that you never seem to find when you're behind. And Crease 3 are playing with that type of heart. McNally and Donovan. McNally breaks it down. There's a man in support. That man is Murphy. He springs out his foot, but he's put it wide. Oh, the, the linesman, the umpire actually is unsure of that one. The umpire on the far side is really unsure there because uh, he looked across, he hesitated, and uh, after hesitation, he flagged it wide. Well, I must say, I was in absolutely no position to judge that one. Anthony O'Connor Dabbing going up for St. Charles. McCarthy, the substitute. Punched in by O'Donovan. Tracy, who's had to work very hard, but he's done very well for St. Gerrard. He's under a lot of pressure. Will he get in his clearance or the referee uh, let him play on with that one? And Tracy, certainly one of the heroes for Gerrard. But they're trailing by a point. Or Conor Davin down the field. There's a crease B standing, and standing under. That's Quinlan, the lad from Valley Bahan. He's had a great game. Was he fouled uh, from... Uh, he, well, he was fouled, all right, but will, will he be taken where the ball lands? No, says the referee. And that in itself a let-off, perhaps, for St. Gerrard's. And dare you even think it if St. Gerrard's could get back up and get a score? Could we possibly have a draw in this uh, All-Ireland final? <laughs> Running there by Eddie Collins for St. Gerrard's. Seven minutes to go in the game, a free out to St. Charles, and Eddie Collins himself will take it. St. Charles in trying to bunch around the middle of the field and certainly not using the wide open spaces of Cork Park to good effect. But here's Stephen Ryan, a great substitute for Free Street. McGettigan and Quinlan. Quinlan playing with great heart in this game. So too is McGettigan for Jarrett. And he tries to block down and he hinders Quinlan as he gets in his clearance there. Fallon tried to get it for Jarrett. It came eventually to Corcoran for Jarrett. So the first attack for St. Jarrett's for something like five or six minutes. Martin and the left half-back, and Finney Walsh, the left half-back, a hero today for three, three wins it. But that should fall for Larkin of, uh, of St. Jarrett's. Larkin has got a man inside him. He's, he had two men, actually. He gives it towards Alan Rowe. Alan Rowe under a lot of pressure. He has Fallon outside him. He loses it, and three, three come away. And it's just not falling for St. Jarrett's. Or at least you might say it fell too easily there out of Alan Rowe's hands. Mark Butler for St. Jarrett's. He has come to midfield. John Fallon has gone inside. To the attack. Ray Brennan towards Mark Butler. Mark Butler to set something up here for St. Charles. He was looking for Brogan. It fell to Michael Martin. Michael Martin in front of the goal. A chance of something here. He's put it wide. He's put it wide. And he was under a lot of pressure. But the shot in any event was a weak one. And it's gone wide. 
So Jarrett have had two chances to do something about that uh, scoreline. 12 points to 11, priest we lead, and we have just over five minutes of play to go. Well, so often in the past, uh, Corey Crogan in particular has pulled it out of the fire for St. Charlotte's. Can he do it today? Michael Martin for St. Charlotte's. Falls out of his hands, but he has a chance to win it back a second time. Mar Michael Martin under a lot of pressure. He's got the free end. It's at a difficult angle. It's not an easy one for St. Charlotte's, but my word, it's an important one. McGettigan, the man entrusted with the responsibility for this one. Leslie McGettigan, 16 years of age from the famous St. Eunan's Club in Letterkenny. So not just all Galway, but all Donegal, I'm sure, behind this young man as he steps up to attempt the equaliser. 12 points to 11. Four minutes to go. And Leslie McGettigan will have to replace the ball. Time is precious for St. Jarrett's, but he did have time to replace it because the referee was speaking to some mentors uh, who were on the field. As Desmond McGettigan kicks now. It looks a good one, it swings in, but he's put it wide. Four minutes to go. St. Jarrett's still trailed by a point, but still they hope. Priest three, can they hold out against all the odds? O'Mahony, what a great first half he had. He wasn't as busy in the second half, but by then he had done his stuff. Blocked by Jerry Burke for St. Jarrett's. He's got Larkin inside him. Jerry Burke to try and come across the field. He's under a lot of trouble. He overcarried the ball. It's a free out to uh, Cruz 3. And uh, the first time drive in towards the goal was on there, but it didn't come from St. Jarrett's. Three minutes to go. What an exciting final we've had. Well, I'm sure there are hundreds and thousands of people down south hoping and praying that Creed Street can hold out. Equally in the west, they're hoping that Jarrett's can do what they did so often in the past and come with a late score. One man who might do it is Alan Rowe, but he, he didn't run for him that time. John Fallon to try and block the way of the uh, Creed Street man. Down towards Regan. It falls for Terry's, but here's Anthony O'Connor Davin. John Fallon. A chance again for St. Jarrett's. A great ball by John Fallon. Oh, that was a wonderful pass. Towards Michael Martin. Can he regain his feet? He has Larkin outside him. Larkin looking for the equaliser. Did he get it? He's put it wide. Unbelievably, a wonderful chance for St. Jarrett's. He's put it wide. Well, Kevin Larkin can hardly believe it. There's two. Almost two and a half minutes to go in this final. 2-6 to 2-5, Creed 3 lead. Unbearable excitement here now with the supporters of both sides. And what a final this has been. Yes, what a final this has been between two very fine sides who have given their all in the cause. And the cause is the Hogan Cup. Falling towards Eddie Collins. Eddie Collins must get rid of it quickly. Towards Alan Rowe. St. Jarrett might try and find Brogan. It fell away from Brogan. It can still come for Alan Rowe. Alan Rowe looking for the point. It breaks to Leslie McGaskin. He's under a lot of pressure. He'll try and shoot for the point. And uh, the fullback Harrington has it for court. Down the field. McGrath and McCarthy. 3 3 coming away with it. Stephen Ryan. Brennan for St. Jarrett and the cornerback Sullivan. It will fall again for Sullivan. He tries to get it in towards John Murphy. Oh, anxious moments for both sets of supporters now. John Murphy, Brennan and Sullivan again. They've had a great tussle. It breaks to Sullivan in front of the goal. A chance of a goal, and he's got it. That is surely that a great goal. Declan Sullivan, he's got the first, and he's surely got the last. Declan Sullivan, the score. There was nothing on his mind but a goal, and nobody, but nobody was going to take it from him. 3-6 to 2-5, Priest 3 in command now. The right half back quickly. Eddie Collins uh, for St. Charles, but surely it's too late. Eddie Collins coming up the field. A heavy challenge on Eddie Collins there. Uh, still Eddie Collins. Towards Corey Brogan, he's got Burke outside him. Brogan with the shot, but when you're behind by four points in the last minute of an All-Ireland final, it simply does not come right. 
for you. Well, no man tried harder to win this match for St. Charles than Porrick Brogan, but the uh, Cork supporters in jubilant mood, and uh, they're entitled to be. Because against all the odds, playing without their midfielders, well, one of them started, but he had to go off injured. So that was a double blow for Cree's three, but they played with fantastic heart. And late goals in almost all of their matches this year have done the trick. Brogan again for St. Charlotte's. Towards uh, Butler, but it ran away from him. And here's Searles, the captain. Oh, what a great game Searles has had. And if ever, every court captain uh, in the future can lead his team with the same kind of example, then Cree's three will always be happy. Donovan in towards Regan. Regan in front of the goal. He'd try one. It came off the post. It broke to Collins. Oh, a great effort by Regan. That surely would have been the proverbial icing on the cake. St. Charles come away, but we're uh, over time now. McGettigan drawn towards Larkin. Brogan runs first. They're all trying now. This is wonderful football. Brogan, Brogan is going to try and go all the way here. They're trying to trip him, but it's blocked down. It can still come from Martin in front of the goal. Martin for St. Charles, and he's put it wide. That's the story today for St. Charles. They've had chances and chances and chances, and they've just put them all wide. Well, it's surely Queen's Wee's Cup now, and uh, their trainer, Michael Carey, was telling me during the week that uh, he thought they were up against it, but that spirit might carry the day. And it has. It's all over. Queen's Wee have won it. Well, what a fantastic triumph for Cork. A most marvellous, magnificent victory for these young lads from Queen's Wee. And there's Paul Cleary, and there the dejected... Uh, figure of one of the St. Charles lads, I think that lad is Eddie Collins, players from both sides going to congratulate and commiserate with each other, there's Jerry Regan, the 16-year-old, who played so well, but St. Charles are absolutely devastated, there's Anthony O'Connor Draven, who tried his heart out for St. Charles, but uh, Michael Donovan, the full forward, he had a good match too, he had a great tussle with Cormac McNally, but all of these players tried so hard today. But in the end, it was the opportunism of uh, Sullivan, the right corner forward. He got the first goal, he got the last one. Murphy got a great goal too. The right full back there, Darmody played well, quickly played well. Uh, John Quinn and the left full back had a great second half. Finbar Walsh had a great first half. The banners telling the story there for Creese 3, but all these lads who played their hearts out, and Brendan Searles, the captain, will come up now and receive the cup. Well, you have to feel enormous sympathy for St. Charles, even though some of these lads, five of them, uh, won all Ireland medals uh, last year and uh, came back hoping to win a second medal today. But in their minds today, I'm sure, they won't even be thinking of last year. One of Charles' lad, Anthony O'Connor Davin, I think, has even thrown away his gloves, such as his uh, dejection, and he can hardly believe it. But uh, Cork certainly can believe it, and there's Brendan Searles. Well, St. Charles were always in it with a chance until two minutes from time when Cork got that last goal. Stephen Ryan, the substitute, a great substitute, had sent that ball in. It broke there uh, to, Declan, Sull to uh, Declan Sullivan. As you could see, Sullivan started, uh, started that movement, and then John Murphy, who himself got a goal, sent it in. Well, Sullivan got it here. He's a very determined fellow. And when he broke through, the net was in his sights. He fixed his sights on the net, and my word, he hit the target in splendid style. So the Cork supporters cheering their team. Yeah! Those green jerseys with the black and white. What a very happy side they are. This uh, college from Turner's Cork. All the more meritorious this achievement when you consider that they are a day school. But uh, traditionally in the past, but in both hurling and football in colleges fair, teams that come out of the south always play with uh, that rare kind of spirit that you, you find hard really to wear down if you're playing against them. When you look back at the famous players who played the, from both sides today, well, the one conclusion that you've come to is that uh, some of these players, too, will be famous in the future, if they're not famous already, because um, this match uh, being watched all over the country today by followers of uh, the type of football that is played in colleges football, and I would like to think that you saw today uh, colleges football at its absolute brilliant best. Some sweeping movements through the field, some great passing, some magnificent fielding, uh, Brogan of Jarrett's and Searles of uh, Cork in particular and some great talents of work on both sides and I think Quinlan and Walsh on the left flank of the uh, Queen's Street defence gave as good an exhibition as I have seen of uh, defensive play on one flank of a, de of a defence. So the uh, Hogan Cup, that famed cup uh, first played for in 1947, St. Jarrett's won it uh, nine times, Queen's Street won it twice before and now they've brought off a third.
So every time they uh, reach the All-Ireland final, 3-3, three, three, uh, win it. And uh, no doubt the happiest man today will be Brendan Searles. You see him up there, the Cork captain. Uh, he's got a big smile and he's well entitled to it. I would imagine that down in Turner's Crossway and this evening in places like Bally Fahan in Douglas and down by the Bars Parish down in the Lock, I'd say they're getting bonfires ready for these lads. And uh, what pride must be felt in the hearts of everybody connected with Nemo Rangers, because I can tell you that the Nemo Rangers that played in the Cork side, that played in the Cork County Championship this year, no fewer than 14 of them went to Chris Three. Nine of these lads who played here today are Nemo lads too, but they're continuing a magnificent St. Finbar's tradition in football and hurling, one of the great clubs in the country. There's their representative today, Brendan Searles, the captain. So there's Brendan Searles to uh, say a few words. No doubt he's rehearsed those words during the week. He may even have been afraid to think of what they were today. No doubt he had learned them off by heart. He was afraid in his heart that he would not get to say them. But he did get them to say them. And so Cork have won the Hogan Cup by defeating a gallant St. Charles side in the final here today. Well, I, I haven't commentated on a match for a long number of years that I've enjoyed so much uh, in terms of the football played. It really was splendid football. But all, all credit to both sides for serving up that kind of football. Hard luck to St. Charles who gave their all in a lost cause, but many, many congratulations as we say goodbye to you from Cork Park to the winners, Colossus the Cruise 3 from Cork. We leave the celebrations, and indeed, didn't they deserve them? Marvellous football for, for Brendan Lowry, for Paddy O'Donoghue, for Kildare. However, only as far as Aidan O'Halloran, who will wait for Matt Connor to take the pass. Matt Connor. Who can wrap it up here? Yes, he's got the goal, Brandon Lowry. What a return, man. He's absolutely delighted with himself from why not. Goal B by Kieran Duff for Dublin in their semi-final replay against Cork when they went to Porky Cueve. Fantastic atmosphere in Porky Cueve. Even greater than if this game had gone back to Croke Park. Dublin again on the attack. Kieran Duff here. He's on his own. Mark Healy with him now, he's done it. Goal C was by Joe McNally of Dublin, also in that All-Ireland semi-final against Cork in August. This is Tommy Conroy. Barney Rock runs into position. Joe McNally is inside. Oh, yes, it's so easy. And goal D was also for Dublin. This one by Barney Rock, and it was in the Leinster Championship replay Tommy against me. Anton O'Toole out, way out from full forward, and controlled that very well he did. Now Kieran Duff. Kieran Duff back to John Kearns. Anton O'Toole calling for him. This is Barney Rock, and the shot on it. Goal E was scored by Mickey MacDonald for Armagh in their National Football League semi-final against Mead last Armagh April. Armagh coming again. And Brian Canavan. This is Des McCoy. To Fran McMahon. The shot from McMahon. Mickey MacDonald and it's got in. Oh, that was a beautiful first-timer. Goal F came from Colm O'Rourke, the Mead full forward in that same league semi-final at Croke Park in April. Very difficult underfoot for the players. Jerry McEntee. McDonald gets it to Colm O'Rourke. Colm O'Rourke, nice turn. And drops it into the back of the net. Goal G was scored by Jack O'Shea, the Kerry midfielder, in the Munster final against Cork in Porky Creeve. Vincent O'Connor knocks it down to Dennis Morn. Dennis Morn inside to Jack O'Shea. Jack O'Shea is clear. He's got Michael Creighton at his mercy. Goal H again for Kerry, but this time scored by Shawnee Walsh, also in that monster final against Cork last July. Kerrigan and Tommy Doyle anxious, anxiously waiting for it to come in. Owen Liston first out to it. John Egan gets the pass. Michael Sheehy, Michael Sheehy, 
Mike Shee over to Sean Walsh, it is. Goal J in the last seconds of that provincial final was Tyg Murphy's late match winner that gave Cork the title. Could Cork have one last chance? Quickly taken. That's into Tyg Murphy. Yes, it's in. Goal K was another Cork score, but this one by Dennis Allen against Dublin in the draw in All-Ireland semi-final. Dublin doing a lot of fisting down of the ball. Ray Hazley. Out now to Dave Barry. Up along the wing. Dennis Allen going after the ball. Dennis Allen with the ball. A goal! A goal by Dennis Allen and what a goal! Goal L was another by Barney Rock for Dublin and this came in that All-Ireland semi-final against Cork. John Kearns. We're in the dying minute of the game now. Here on top, Brian Mullins out to the wing. And this is Ray Hazley across in front of the goal. And goal! Finally, goal M, and this was scored by Stephen Joyce in Galway's Connacht final against Mayo in McHale Park, Castle Bar. Feeds it back to Brian Tonti. Up towards Gay McManus it goes, fisted on forward. Michael Gavin gets back there. Stephen Joyce is in with a chance of a goal. A goal, a goal, but what a mistake. And now to run down those goals again. Goal A, Brendan Lowry. B, Kieran Duff. C, Joe McNally. D, by Barney Rock. E, by Mickey MacDonald. F, Colm O'Rourke. G, Jack O'Shea. H, Shawnee Walsh. J, Tyke Murphy. K, Dennis Allen. L, Barney Rock. And M, Stephen Joyce. And here's how you enter. Use postcards only, please. Make your selection of three goals in one, two, three order and write them on the right-hand side of the card with your name and address on the left-hand side. And mail the entries to Football Goals of the Year, P.O. Box 718, Gaelic Stadium, RTE, Dublin 4, to reach us before February the 20th. And the judge for the football competitions, Colin McAlarney, the former great down footballer who was one of the notable Railway Cup players and all-stars of modern times. And the winning viewer will have two tickets for the centenary football final and that's in Crow Park next September and now for the football saves of the year save A was made by John O'Leary the Dublin goalkeeper against Mead in the Leinster Championship at Crow Park in June Vinny and Murtha has got Colin Morok outside him there's something on here from Mead to Frank O'Sullivan he should score a great save by the goalkeeper Save B was made by Jerome O'Mahony of Colosh the Crease 3 last May in the All-Ireland Colleges final against St. Charlotte's. Eddie Collins with the kick for St. Charlotte's. Brogan uh, not quite catching that one cleanly. It comes to Martin. He's got Alan Rowe inside him if he can find him. It breaks to Mark Butler. Mark Butler, a great shot and a wonderful save by the goalkeeper. Save C also by Jerome O'Mahony for his Cork school in the All-Ireland final which was staged in Cork Park. by Brogan in the middle of the field. He's got Mark Butler. There could be something on here. That's another great save. Jerry Burke is in there for Charlotte. It's gone wide. Save D is another one by John O'Leary for Dublin, this time against Cork in the replayed All-Ireland semi-final. John Cleary, look how far down he is. Dominic Creedon. Jerry Hargan puts it off. Dave Barry is inside. Dave Barry is cut off by John O'Leary. Save E was made by Tom Hunt of Waterford in their Munster Championship match against Clare in mid-June in Limerick. This is Frank Meskill. If he gets away from Michael Coffey, that was a good stop by Tom Hunt. Save F was again by John O'Leary for Dublin and it was in the All-Ireland Champions League match against Down. Here's Greg Blaney, a chance to break for Don. Danger for Dublin. Blaney going all the way. Well kept out. A good save by O'Leary. And here are those saves again. Save A, John O'Leary. Save B, Jerome O'Mahony. Save C, also Jerome O'Mahony. Save D, John O'Leary. E, Tom Hunt. And F, John O'Leary again. One. Well, there you have them. Uh, and remember, separate entries for the saves and two All-Ireland tickets for the winning entry in each of the two categories and the address again is Gaelic Stadium Post Office Box 718 RTE 
Donnybrook. Team goals, team type goals, individual goals. Uh, there, there were one or two goals of great drama and significance as well. In the saves, well, it's my own theory. Uh, it's a position I never volunteered for was goals for a goalkeeper. But it's my own theory that uh, the most difficult save to make is one from a deflection or uh, a ricochet, that type of save, rather than maybe one that looks a bit more spectacular. So that was the criteria that I, I judged the goals and saves on. Did you have to look at them several times or did you know your winners when you saw them the first time? Uh, I did look several times uh, and despite that I didn't change far enough that much from the first time that I, that I looked at. I think, it's, it's, I think the more often you looked at it sometimes, <laughs> the more it was because there were, especially with the goals, there were half a dozen goals that easily could have been number one. Could we get you to your decisions then? We'll talk about the goals, and as with Eamon Cregan, we'll take them in the reverse order. Your third goal? Uh, my third goal is goal H by Shawnee Walsh in the Munster final. I selected that particular goal because uh, it, it's really sh it's a great indication of the flair and vision uh, and understanding of that great carry team. It begins with a free kick from uh, Paul O'Shea to Owen Liston, who, and a terrific bit of interpassing between John Egan and Mike Sheehy eventually gets to the end line, draws the goalkeeper, puts the ball across to Sean Walsh, who has a relatively simple task, kind of putting the ball in an empty net. To McCurrigan and Tommy Doyle, anxious, anxiously waiting for it to come in. Owen Liston, first out to it. John Egan gets the pass. Mike O'Shea, Mike O'Shea, Mike Sheehy over to Sean Walsh, it is! Terrific goal. The second one then? The second goal is uh, by Jack O'Shea in the same game. Uh, a terrific individual effort. This he picks up the ball about the middle of the field, makes ground quickly, looks as if he's going to be sandwiched between, I think it's Christy Ryan and Jimmy Kerrigan, but slips into fifth gear and suddenly he's clean through. Uh, the goalkeeper leaves the line. He still keeps his head and puts it to one side. A terrific goal. Took great determination and courage to score it. Vincent O'Connor knocks it down to Dennis Morn. Dennis Morn inside to Jack O'Shea. Jack O'Shea is clear. He's got Michael Creighton at his mercy. In first place, it just had to be Barney Rock's goal in the All-Ireland semi-final, the, the goal that drew the game with Cork. I selected that goal because uh, it, it, I admired the way that the Dublin players that were involved, despite the fact that they knew they, you know, they knew they had to get a goal. It was the dying seconds of the game, and yet they still kept playing the ball around, still trying to look for an opening to carve out an opening. Uh, particularly a terrific example of Brian Mullins looking up and a delightful pass to Ray Hazley, who appeared from corner back. I give Hazley terrific credit as well because he could have shot at that stage, and you know he could have got a rush of blood at that stage and shot. But he kept the head and put it across to Barney Rock. And Barney himself had a bit of scoring to do because there was two defenders on him and the goalkeeper came out. But he kept the head well and uh, made no mistake. John Kearns. We're in the dying minute of the game now. Here on top, Brian Mullins out to the wing. And this is Ray Hazley across in front of the goal. OK, we look at the saves then, and again, we'll start with your third one. Uh, my third save goes to young Jerome O'Mahony in the Hogan Cup final. Uh, this particular save is save B, and uh, he, uh, it's a shot from a fair distance out, but he, he was unsighted, and it, the, the shot had a fair deal of venom, but he still got across and put it around the post. Brogan uh, not quite catching that one cleanly. It comes to Martin. He's got Alan Rowe inside him. If he can find him, it breaks to Mark Butler. Mark Butler, a great shot and a wonderful save by the goalkeeper. And second place is save F by John O'Leary in the down game. Uh, Greg Blaney broke onto a ball, soloed through. There was a, quite a number of players in front of, of O'Leary. Uh, Blaney's shot was blocked down, but immediately he volleyed a low hard shot. O'Leary got down, terrific, and held on to the ball. And here's Greg Blaney, a chance to break for Don. Danger for Dublin. Blaney going all the way. Well kept out, and a good save by O'Leary. In first place is a uh, young Jerome O'Mahony, save B. Uh, is the one in the same game now in the Hogan Cup final. 
a high ball is driven in from Brogan, the midfielder, uh, to the full forward. Uh, I'm not sure whether he's a full forward or not, but one of the forwards completely on his own. Now, Mahoney had every right to expect that the, the full forward was going to catch it, and it looked as if he was going to catch it, but at the last second, the full forward deflected the ball. Uh, a nasty ball to, to save, but O'Mahony got down well to his right. Then he got up again and got across his goal to put off the second player coming in. Great catch by Brogan in the middle of the field. He's got Mark Butler. There could be something on here. That's another great save. Jerry Burke is in there for Charlotte. It's gone wide. Those results again. First place goal L by Barney Rock of Dublin in the drawn match with Cork. Second goal G by Jack O'Shea of Kerry. And third goal H by Shawnee Walsh of Kerry. In the saves, first save C by Jerome O'Mahony of Colosh the Crease 3, second save F by John O'Leary of Dublin, and third save B, again Jerome O'Mahony from the All-Ireland Colleges final. Well, our congratulations to Barney and Jerome, of course, and also to Jimmy Barry Murphy and James Seymour. And in fact, we believe that uh, Jerome O'Mahony and his teammates from Colosh the Crease 3 may be looking at us at this moment. They were playing a match in Dublin this morning, and I believe they're going to stop on the way to watch this programme. So a great year it has been lads for you in Colosh the Crease 3. Well in the next few weeks we'll be presenting all four of those with their trophies which have been specially designed and cut for us by Waterford Crystal. No doubt they'll be proud possessions in their four homes and for the winning viewers of course there are coveted All-Ireland tickets for the hurling final in Thurless on September the 2nd and in football in Croke Park three weeks later and these are the lucky winners. In the Hurling Goals competition, the winners Tom Thomas Byrne, 137 Farron Ferris Avenue, Farron Ree, Cork City. His was the postcard drawn from 31 correct entries that had goals HBK. Hurling final tickets also to Dennis O'Donovan, New Park, Kilmallock, County Limerick. 30 correct here with FEC and his card the one out of the draw. Football goals next and the winners Pader Cartmill, 30 Roxborough Park, Moy, County Tyrone. And from 339 entries in this section, there wasn't any correct. So Thomas was one of the two that had the first two right, goals L and G. And finally, football saves. And this was the postcard drawn from four correct. It belongs to Sean O'Connor, Ronoco, Castle Domain, Tralee. Well, to those four viewers, tickets for the All-Ireland Finals next September. And our gratitude, of course, to Liam Mulvihill, the Director General of the GA for making those tickets available to us for our competitions. Well, we're taking a pause now. Coming up in part two, we'll look at the Hurling League. That's at 20 to 5 after motorsport. in Cork for the save in football. So the four prize winners who'd been accompanied to Montrose by friends and some county officials could go away with the magnificent trophies that had been specially designed for us by Waterford Crystal to decorate their homes. But before they departed, we got the reactions to winning the competitions. First, the only one to be a repeat winner, Jimmy Barry Murphy of Cork. I think it's a great idea, and uh, naturally I was hoping to, I thought I had a chance of it. But, uh, you know, some of these things you never know, so I was delighted to get it. What about the goal itself? It was an instinctive swing wasn't it? It was really you know I think there was a lot of luck attached to it it's a situation where Connor Hayes was going out in front of me to the ball and normally in those situations playing full forward they try and catch the ball but uh, more in desperation than anything else I pulled on it and luckily for me it flew into the roof of the net. Barney you had two goals in this competition which was would you prefer yourself the one against Mead or against Cork? Well it's hard to say Mick you know but the goal that got it I was delighted that I got it that was the main thing but the goal against Mead I thought was a good goal you know, it was a shot more so than that, and that's where the goal against Cork was it all happened in a fraction, you know, a fraction of a second, and I didn't really re uh, remember much of it. And of but course, there were two very valuable goals, but I suppose the one against Mead, because of what, uh, you know, it, it really kept you in the championship at a time when it looked as if you were gone. 
That's right, and the mid goal was a shot, but then again, the goal against Cork was the best goal of the lot for uh, atmosphere the whole lot, and it was a crucial goal at that time. So it puts an extra gloss this now on, a, on an exceptionally good year for you. Yeah, it's been a fabulous year for me altogether. You know, hopefully now 84 will be as good. How pleased were you, James, that you won this competition? Um, I was very surprised, actually. It was the last thing I expected to happen. Like, you know, it's rare. For a minor, never won the hurling before, so I was delighted. Jerome, were you happy to win this uh, competition? Well, I was delighted. I mean, I never thought a college's player would, would get the honour. Like, it is the start of a hopefully blossoming career, right? I hope, anyway. It was a great year for your school, wasn't it? It was, but there's only a third all Ireland final. We have great tradition in keeping three in a row, but here we were delighted. Everybody was delighted to win it. Four good winners indeed. Well, before we join Noel for racing, let's uh, go to Brenda Delaney for an update on the racing results starting with the two o'clock at Leopard. I, mean, I can tell you they're very nervous lads, I'm sure, at the moment. But for Colossia Crease 3, well, anybody that knows colleges football knows that they're no strangers to All-Ireland Finals. Well, I'm going to sit back for the next few minutes and enjoy the action here in Port Leash. And I'm going to hand you over to our commentator in a moment, Jared Canning. Perhaps I should say on the way through that it won't be an entirely neutral...